Hello everyone. In this video, I will discuss about the role of financial markets and institutions. In this graph, you can see in the right, we have investors who have uh, excess cash to invest. Now, they invest in financial markets and also the fund is channeled to financial intermediaries. Now, it's possible that investors directly invest in the financial markets, for example, stock markets, money markets, or uh, they supply this fund to financial intermediaries, for example, banks, insurance companies, mutual funds, or pension funds in different ways, and these financial intermediaries will invest in financial markets. And ultimately, the either way, the fund will be channeled to the corporations. Those are in deficit of cash, that means they need cash, so those will be actually invested in, theoretically, in the positive NPV projects. So financial markets are primarily two types, primary market and secondary markets. And you understand that primary market is a market for the issuance of new securities. So when a company issues new securities, which is known as initial public offering, that is a primary market transaction. So if you buy shares from an initial public offering, then that's a primary market transaction. On the other hand, secondary market is the market for existing securities. So in the secondary market, the securities are traded among the investors. One key difference between the primary market and secondary market is that the primary market supply the fund from the investor to the issuer of the corporations. For example, if you buy shares from an issuing company, so fund will be channeled from you as an investor to the issuing company. However, in the secondary market transaction, fund is merely transferred from one investor to another investor. It doesn't channel the fund to the issuing company. Financial market can be two types again. One is the organized market, another is OTC market or over-the-counter market. Typically, the stock exchanges that we know are the examples of organized market. For example, Australian Stock Exchange, New York Stock Exchange, or London Stock Exchange. OTC market, on the other hand, is... Uh, a slight informal market. Organized market has a physical location and OTC market on the other hand is a ne network of brokers and dealers. Each market has um, some criteria for a company to be listed and organized markets criteria is more stringent. That's why some companies maybe instead of listing in an organized market uh, be listed in an over-the-counter market. Now, the role of financial institutions, um, you understand that financial institutions act as financial intermediary that gather the savings from many individuals and reinvest them in financial markets. For example, if you think about banks, banks raise money by taking deposits or by selling debt and common stock to investors. Then they lend the money to companies and individuals, of course, uh, banks must charge sufficient interest to cover their costs and to compensate depositors and other investors. Banks and their intermediate relatives such as savings and loan companies are the most familiar intermediaries. But there are many others such as insurance companies and mutual funds. In the United States, insurance companies are more important than banks for the long-term financing of business. They hold massive investment in corporate stocks and bonds, and they often make long-term loans directly to corporations. Most of the money of the loans come from the sale of insurance policies. So uh, you buy a fire insurance or policy of your home. You pay cash to insurance company, which you invest in the financial markets. In exchange, you get a financial asset. Now, an obvious question is why are financial intermediaries different from manufacturing corporation? First, the financial intermediary may raise money in a special way, for example, by taking deposits or by selling insurance policies. Second, the financial intermediary invests in financial assets such as stocks, bonds, or loans to businesses or individuals. By con contrast, 
manufacturing companies mainly invest in real assets such as plant and equipment. Now, what are the main role of financial markets and intermediaries? First of all, this pay payment mechanism. Think how inconvenient life would be if all payments had to be made in cash. Fortunately, checking accounts, credit cards, electronic transfers allow individuals and firms to send and receive payments quickly and safely over long distances. Banks are the obvious providers of payment services, but they are not alone. For example, if you buy shares in a money market mutual fund, your money is pulled with that of other investors and used to buy safe long-term securities. You can then write checks on this mutual fund investment just as if you had a bank deposit. Also borrowing and lending, almost all financial institutions are involved in channeling savings towards those who can best use them. Thus, if uh, say, uh, Mr. Jones has more money now than, she, uh, than he needs and wishes to save for a rainy day, then he can put the money in bank savings deposit. If uh, Mr. Smith wants to buy a car now and pay it later, he can borrow money from the bank. Of course, individuals are not alone in needing to raise cash. Companies with um, profitable investment opportunities may wish to borrow from the bank or they may raise the finance by selling new shares or bonds. Governments also often run at a deficit, which they fund by issuing large quantities of debt. And last of all, this pooling risk, financial markets and institutions allow firms and individuals to pool their risk. For instance, insurance companies make it possible to share the risk of an uh, automobile accident or a household fire. Here is an example. Suppose that you have only a small sum to invest. You could buy a stock of a single company, but then you would be wiped out if the company went belly up. It is generally better to buy shares in a mutual fund that invest in a diversified portfolio of common stocks or other securities. In this case, you are exposed only to risk that security prices as a whole will fall. That's the end of our discussion on this chapter. Thank you very much.